Hello and welcome back. This is video number four, using the sidebar. The sidebar for the Gutenberg editor is located to the right. So we're going to discuss the different features and what's available to you. Okay, so the sidebar is to the right. And as I briefly mentioned in the previous videos, that Upon editing certain blocks, you will see that the right-hand sidebar will change. So the reason why they've entered a lot of different other features into the sidebar is because, as you can see, there's only so much that you can put in here. So as you can see here, if I highlight this, I can edit the block type, the heading, heading one, two, three, four, bold italicize, I can hyperlink it, and I can do a few more things. Now, if I were to want to change the alignment, I could not do that over here. So if I highlight this here, so we highlight this here, let me highlight it. You can see text alignment left, center, and to the right. And if I click on advanced, I can add a HTML anchor, which basically lets you link that link. So that's essentially what this is. But there are certain elements here that are kind of redundant. So you just need to be aware of what is redundant and what is not. All right. So if we go to the bulleted list here, you can see a list is a list. So there's, there's not really anything additionally to that. All right. So right here, you can change it from an unordered list, which is basically dots to an ordered list, which is numbers, as you can see here. So if we change it back to this, we can indent it. And that's what this is about. So we can move it to the right hand side. So we can move this one to the right and move this one to the left. We can then bold we can italicize and there we go. So what I found is that as you begin to edit the blocks, you will learn what other features are available to you. Now that's in terms of blocks. If we go over here, there's blocks and there's document document controls the whole page or the whole post. So in other words, you can go through here. You can see that this, post is public, meaning everybody else can see this. So if I wanted to change this, I could to private so that everybody cannot see this post format. We have standard, we have uh, different post formats for different media types. You can say stick to the top of the blog. So you can move this to the top of the blog. You can click pending review if it's pending. So if you are say a writer or you have a writer on your team, you could give them access to the site and you could have them click pending review. And then you come in and you review it. And if it's good to go, then you post it and publish it to public. Permalinks is basically the URL. So if you click here, you're going to see the domain name with the name of the page. So like I talked about earlier, if you name, the page title, a certain name that will be your domain.com slash the title name. All right. That's basically what the permalink is. Now this enables you to change that if you choose to do so, but just bear in mind that if you're editing on a live site and you change the permalink and that post or page has been there for maybe weeks or even months, then by changing it, you could potentially lose the traffic that is coming from maybe Google to that page. So you would need to use like a WordPress plugin like Yoast SEO to change that. Then of course you have categories, which allows you to categorize your posts or your pages. You can click add new category. If you want to add an additional category, now, as you can see, there are parent categories. And then if you want to make a category underneath a specific 
parent category, this will become the child category. So that's there if you want to add categories. And then of course you have tags. Tags allows you to create a similarity between post or pages. So if you have, let's say five posts that are dealing with a specific, maybe uh, audio soundtrack, or maybe they're a specific element that is different than categories, then you can enter that here. So for example, let's say that you have a podcast blog and you've interviewed five different people and they are very similar in a specific industry or niche then you can put that here and what that will do is if somebody's interested in that niche they click on that tag and they will be able to see the other five people that you've interviewed in that specific niche or industry so that's what tags is all about featured image is basically the image that people will see before they click on the post or page so this allows you to enter an image we have an excerpt and then of course the discussion so you can allow comments you can remove comments or remove pingbacks and trackbacks so if you don't want discussion you can uncheck that and if you do want discussion you can click allow comments all right, so that's basically it. Block is different, of course. Block pertains to over here. And that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next video.